Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back my friend, Christy Nocon. You may remember her, she was on the show about a month ago, and we were talking about growing up in Vallejo that she did, and singing karaoke and all that stuff. Well, she's coming back on today, because uh, we were just about due uh, for another episode, and um, we're going to talk about other stuff. I don't want to spoil the surprise at the moment. I want to. I want everyone listening to like be surprised uh, about what we're going to talk about, and quite frankly, you won't be surprised, because it's something I talk about on this show all the time. Hmm, I wonder what it could be. It could be anything. Huh, I wonder what it is. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to be welcoming Christy back on the show today and stuff. And it's going to be pretty interesting, that I, I think. And um, so, yeah, here is my next interview with Christy Nocon. Hi, Christy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> You're making some pasta? Uh, maybe the pasta and the fried food. <laughs> they got to cut down on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been, I've been on the meat diet, meat and vegetables diet lately, and I'm losing weight. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, my my face is getting thinner every day. Really? Yeah. You had a post on Facebook. I will I will when I'm satisfied and I want to share it with the world. <laughs> well, you, you know what? Everyone's gonna be asking me for advice. That's for sure. <laughs> asking you how you did it. <laughs> I don't give any advice. <laughs> I'm in no position to give advice. Oh my god. Well, you know what I hear is um, walking and running is like the best way to lose weight quick, like, like in a week. Or, like fast, like walking every day and just running as much as you can. And I've seen it. My son actually, he's 20, and he's been running around the neighborhood, like on the, when he's off or like in the evening. Mm-hmm. He was 242 two months ago. He's down to 219 for like 23 pounds. And he's not eating rice anymore. Yeah, I can I can walk. I can't run anymore because I got metal in my leg from my car accident. But I can walk oh. definitely. I I have, I have a treadmill here at the gym at, in my uh, apartment complex, so I do that. Okay, okay. That, and you know what they say? It's like just all that cardio is with um, cardio, and I think it's, you know just moving your moving your body. You know, it generates all the, you know, the burning of the calories. Mm-hmm. So I noticed that, that that week, we started going back to the gym last week. Three days, I lost five pounds, maybe, a little more than five. Right. And it's kind of staying there. So even though, it's, you know, I'm eating the same as I always eat, I, I try not to eat. If someone told me, don't eat. I got lost like 35 pounds and got rid of the you know, eliminated diabetes. Mm-hmm. You lost 45 pounds in like a year's time. His diabetes went away. Just from drinking water, no more. Um, he cut down on the starches and his carbs. Yeah. He still eats like red. He still eats red meat, burgers, and stuff. Just all the carbs. That's what my son's doing too. And um, and he he his best advice is don't eat anything before you go to bed. If you're going to eat late, eat two hours before you go to bed. And I've been kind of remembering that in my head, like, you know, trying not to eat. I'll drink water, and so, and I'll, like, I'll drink tea and stuff, but mm-hmm. that's about, I'll even eat oatmeal, but oatmeal is good for your system. Yep. And that'll help you, you know, help, oatmeal helps you lose weight. So. so how's everything with you? How's the podcast, uh, podcast doing? <laughs> Still not, uh, still not doing good in terms of viewership, but I'm getting better and better with the interviews and stuff. Just this summer has been so crazy. So many people have turned me down to be on, and some people have lied to me and said they'll do it, and then they just lie to me, you know. 
It's it's it, really. But, Have yeah. you ever um, interviewed any celebrity, like actual celebrity? Not a list celebrities, but I've interviewed a lot of celebrities that were big in the '80s and not anymore. Oh, oh. I, I have seen some of your own. Um, uh, can you name them? Because I forgot uh, the oh. name that I saw. Oh, God. Diane Franklin. Um, oh, my God. Uh, Linnea Quigley. Um, who else? Oh, yeah. So many, so many of them I can't even oh. think of right now. <laughs> you would think that would benefit them, too, as much as, you know, as you. Yeah, I mean, some... Some episodes I've done with them have gotten a lot of views and stuff, but I don't really care about it. I just want to, you know, sh- uh, sharpen my skills as an interviewer and stuff for when I'm in Hollywood yeah. and everything and stuff. Well, you got the voice for it, that's for sure. <laughs> Somebody told me that in high school, that I had the perfect voice to be a radio guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever tried, like, doing internship with radio stations? 96.5 is always looking for people. Someone suggested it to me, but, you know, I, I live here in Reading where everything is politically correct oh, yeah. and there's not a whole lot of good radio, but, you know, if I go to L.A., I'll definitely intern over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is your goal. So have you tried when you were here in the Bay Area trying to get into some radio stations here? No, because when, uh, towards the end that I was there, in the last couple of years, uh, you know, after recovering from my accident, I was just so focused on my comedy and going to conventions and stuff that but by the time I wanted, I realized I wanted to do all this stuff, I had moved over here, and that was a dumb mistake. Uh-huh. <laughs> but you know what? You do travel, so you just don't, you know, like, yeah. you know how you come down to the Bay Area and stay, like, a few days and, uh, you know, try to catch up on stuff here. Right. You know, uh, Punchline too. There's, I mean, Tommy T's has. There's a Tommy T's in, uh, I think, Rancho Cordova. Yeah, but they, they have open night. Yeah, but they don't. Punchline too. I think a lot more people have gotten discovered from the punchline. But no. Now, Tommy T's too. They send me it like a text every week for their shows. Yeah, no, those clubs, so, those clubs wouldn't like my type of humor. I've only played the improv <laughs> and Rooster T Feathers. No, they don't. They they will take any humor. You want no. me to try to get you into Tommy T? Because mm. I know I can. They kind of know it's there. We've gone there now. They send me free um, tickets a lot, too. No, they they want clean corporate stuff. But I will tell you this. I almost had my first paid gig there a couple of months before I left the Bay Area. And a, a rainstorm made a tree fall on top of the BART train that was behind mine. And I couldn't do it. Oh, yeah. Are you yeah. All the days. I was booked. Did they give you another day to come back? No, because it was a one-time only no. showcase. Are you kidding me? Crazy. Well, I mean, they need people now. I always hear them, you know, are saying, they, you know, people are leaving. You say, like, send them our way. You know, someone send them our way. Yeah, but they... Yeah, I do. They want family-friendly stuff, though, but it's okay. I don't... Well, they don't it's a comedy club. They don't care for that. They want it. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they they get comedians of all kinds of... Um, and plus, they're looking for comedians who have a lot of TV and movie credits nowadays. It's it's just the whole political structure of it is different now. And when I get to L.A., I'm only going to do it for maybe two more years, and then I'm going to quit doing stand-up. Oh, really? So you just, just wait and do it over there? Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, the, the, it's just stand-up is not what it used to be. It's become kind of antiquated and yet people are still doing it yeah Eric, that's true but you know what i know tommy t's they they have like some kabir zing and friends right i know i know kabir he yeah. booked me for the improv once yeah yeah but they have the night they have those like twice a week where they have open mic night and um then a lot of those people like you know will move on like go to you know they you know, they get, you know, opportunities to go to other places from there. Like, they're start, you know, kind of like their starting spots. And they, you know, they have people, like, that will they have, like, agents there. Like, I, that's what I heard. Like, you know, it's kind of like a black comic standing 
kind of thing. Some of them like will get discovered from there. Yeah. Because there's so many local, there's so many local comedians. I think there's more local comedians than there are like you know local musicians and bands and stuff. Yeah. In the, in the area. But yeah, but don't let's not get me started because I could go on for days about how badly I was treated by the Bay Area scene. <laughs> That. Yeah, it's it's bad over there, but give it a chance, you know. I did for ten years, and they it, it never stopped. But um, really? yeah, but um, I was, so I was curious to know, and we talked about this on Facebook about um, what you think uh, about the G spot. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's, in our, you know, it's part of our bodies. Right. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, you know, it's like, you know, it's one of the reasons women have kids, <laughs> have babies, <laughs> get pregnant. Mm-hmm. Um, Well, some people think that it's not real, but I think it is. You know? Be- well, do men have them too? Yes, it's our prostate glands. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, it's a part of the prostate gland. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I'm learning something new now. I didn't. I thought it was just, you know, women have <laughs> But you know what's sad? And when I'm thinking the P word, the last four deaths, can tell you if I got my prostate checked right now at 35 years old oh my god it would be so embarrassing because I'm I'm, I'm easily quick to orgasm you know and if it was a man yeah. or, if it was a man or a woman I would I would come right there in the, in the doctor's office <laughs> wow. Wow. That's, that's sensitive. <laughs> yes Yes. Wow. Well, I, I don't know. I hear about different things when people go to doctor's offices, you know. So that's, I, that's probably why I prefer, like, a female gynecologist. I'm <laughs> 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 sure 95% of women do. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, I would say that G, G spot is re- responsible for children in this world. <laughs> Right. right? <laughs> Reproductive organs, so. But, like, yeah, no. I, I guess since I'm 53, I'm, you know, kind of past the stage of, like, <laughs> talking about, you know, like, now you worry about all your, your parts and, you know, then enjoy them. <laughs> yeah. You know, training, right? You know, like my friends and I talk about how, how, uh, how, uh, what do you call it? how important to have a, a mammogram, but how, Oh, 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh my God. Yeah, just uh, to me, you know, a lot of people didn't really find out about the G-Spot until Dr. Beverly Whipple wrote that book uh, back in the early 80s or something. And yeah, I think it's become part of our culture now and stuff. I certainly didn't know about it until I was like 15 because no one taught me that in um, in, spe in uh, sex ed in middle school, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I've never heard of that author either. I've heard of that like, Dr. doctor is it Ruth? Like, yeah. She's the one like I grew up hearing about and seeing on you know the news and the talk shows. Ruth, do um, you remember how to, you know what the hell? Doctor Ruth. Yeah, Doctor Ruth. The, yeah. Yeah, she's the one that I grew up um, you know like hearing about all the time. And, um, you know, I kind of like hear about her books. You know, they talk about her, they, all the talk shows have interviewed her, you know, and talk about her books and stuff like that. She's the only one that I know, you know. And yeah. And Dr. Phil tries to talk about every topic, you know. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. And well, Dr. Whipple, she she's only just known for that. I mean, she's been around, you know, since the same time as Dr. Ruth, but she's only known for that, really. But, um, yeah, it's Dr. Ruth and uh, Dr. Sue Johansson, who used to host a show on um, the women's channel, Oxygen uh, channel, and she used to take calls uh, from the audience and stuff. And she was so damn funny, I'll tell you. What was this again? What's the name? Dr. Sue Johansson. Ooh, I'm trying to... Is that name? Ring, it rings a bell. It does sound familiar. She had curly hair, glasses, and she talked like she used to be a That's smoker. Cool. No, this woman's hair is really curly, and she wears glasses. Is she red? No. Is she red? -headed? She's blonde. Wait a minute. Oh, I, now I'm forgetting what color Dr. Ruth's hair is. I see the red or blonde. Okay. Not, okay, I think I'm, I'm remembering who you're talking about. It's, she's probably a lot taller than Dr. Ruth. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. Do, do you remember? In, in, how's uh, Redding? How's Redding? I forgot to ask about that. How, how, the same. You're okay. For, the same you know, board. I went to school with a girl that moved from Vallejo to Redding. Her whole family moved there. Uh -huh. And they, they um, it took a while, but for her to mark that she's safe, but she, she marked that she was safe, you know. Oh, God. Yeah. That's... I know you, uh, when you marked, you were safe. Um, I saw that. God, it sounded like the whole city was just was wiped out, you know? Yeah, it was it was insane. I mean, for the whole town. I had to stay at my godparents for the weekend, which was a nightmare. And there's just, wow. I was just afraid that, like, we weren't going to make it. And I'm glad we did. I was I was home by Monday, and I was just jumping with joy, I'll tell you. Well, I prayed for you, for you and my friends there uh, for the whole town. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Sometimes you just can't. I can't believe everything that's going on in, in, in Hawaii there. You just, you know, they, they just in the news today, by 20, 20, uh, 2030, like 70% mm -hmm. of California will, you know, wildfires you know, will, you know, hit California. Like 70% 70, 70 of California. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be, you know, affected by wildfires. That's crazy. Yeah, it's That's just... almost 100%. It's not 30%. It's not 40 They said 70%. I don't, well, these are like, you know, experts that are predicting this. Yeah. Well, this well this fire was um, caused by a guy. It was an arson, and they caught him. Yeah. They caught him within a week of it, like that weekend that I was there. And... Oh, my God. That, it, I mean, it's... The guy saying, oh, no, that was a car fire, right? I heard it was from a car fire. Yes. That was the car. He, he, it was he, from a car fire, though, right? Yeah, he set, he set a car on fire uh, deliberately. And oh, he, my God. Are you, you 
No, he. he yeah. There's people out there that do sick things like that. Oh, oh my God. I cannot believe that. I thought that this, uh, the car just caught on fire. Did you know that happened? Here in Baleo, in the parking lot of Starbucks, four cars caught on fire from a Mini Cooper that caught on fire. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, I found out Mini Cooper's a fire. Oh, wow. Like a lot of the models. So every time I see one now, I'm like, I'm not parking next to that. <laughs> it was a two old lady that were in that car, and she bought the car four, six years ago. Mm -hmm. No, no, she bought it oh, two years ago, used, 2012. Yeah. And they never had problems with it, and all of a sudden she's at Starbucks in line, her car is on fire outside, everyone's running outside, wondering what, you know, what this fire is, and it turns out the three cars around her mm -hmm. are on fire. She damaged the three cars around her. Wow. That's... Yeah, two of them were college students were like struggling. Oh my God. Yeah, it just from her car, her little Mini Cooper burned down. It burned down uh, like a SUV, like a Corolla and a Honda. Imagine that. Wow. And the one in, the one in front of her suffered the most, even worse than her car than the Mini Cooper. Mm -hmm. Just burned off the whole front end. Maybe. If you look through my pictures, you'll see it. Yeah, it's crazy. And I yeah. Googled that. That made me really conscious, really like, you know, like really nosy about what cars catch on fire. Mm hmm That they said a Chevy Volt, because they're electric. Right. Catch on fire. Uh, some of the, uh, oh, Volvo, not Volvo. Is it the Fiat? Okay, I know the Mini Cooper. Mm hmm Yep, sure do. Yeah, those, those, um, oh, and uh, BMW, nice Mercedes and BMWs are in it, but I forgot which which model. Uh-huh. Mercedes was like one of the top ones, and Tesla. Imagine that, Tesla. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about yeah, cars. I, 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 I saw one on the freeway on fire, too. It was, a, it was like maybe a six, seven-year-old Tesla, but yeah, I saw one on the freeway. They were right about that. Yeah. See, of all the ones, of all the ones that they listed on there, and it's, this is on all different websites, it's the same, pretty much the same cars. I've seen maybe three or four of those cars, or the top 10 cars, mm -hmm. catch on fire. So wow. I've seen the Mini Cooper already, the Dodge, I've seen that, uh, what is the Tesla? I forgot the other one, um, the Ford, there were some Fords on there, but I didn't see any Toyotas. I didn't see any Honda. Um, oh, there was Nissan too, but I forgot what model. Mm -hmm. so, wow. Like, it's like every time I see a car on fire on the freeway anywhere, I try to see what it is, and I'm like, oh, I'm not getting that kind of car. Yeah. Well, I'm not parking next to that car, so you kind of help you know, to know what kind of car it is. Mm -hmm. She had just parked it like 10 minutes before that. Yeah. Now, you you mentioned before um, about your karaoke friend uh, who died. Um, did, did I was wondering, did you know Aubrey? What's Aubrey's last name? Uh, Weldon. Remember? Aubrey Weldon. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. Did, did you go karaoke over there in the South Bay? Unless you came over here. He he came to anywhere uh, like like Gus and like this other guy Jose, who I met him from, uh, used to do karaoke. With Gus, did they used to um, go where Gus was? Sometimes, yeah. Who? Aubrey. Aubrey's a man. He he died. Okay. He died about six years ago, maybe five. Um, I knew him uh, when I was a bouncer over at the Swinging Door in San Mateo uh, from 2007-2009. Uh, he would come in, yeah. and that guy had an amazing life. He was a, um, a lawyer, and he taught law and stuff, and he did all these 
amazing things. And he su- he sang R and B and soul and country music really really good. Wow. Do you have any videos on YouTube? Maybe um, if you yeah check out his name and search. Uh, he, well, I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear his voice. He sang every pretty much like sang every genre. Sounds huh? like it from what you're telling me. Yeah, and he's he was from Bakersfield too. Really, and you knew him well? Not uh, very well, but like for like four or five years, I would see him like everywhere uh, for karaoke. Really? Yeah, he's a good guy. I'll be well. Whoever, uh, uh, well, uh, you probably won't do a podcast then. Huh? I'm gonna ask you if you. No, I've, you. no, I've only been doing this podcast a year, and there was no podcast when I met him. <laughs> That's right, too. You're right. When this podcast uh, came, it started down. When they, it came about, like, what, five, six years ago? Right? Um, nine years ago, actually. Okay, I was kind of close. <laughs> I was even going to say seven, so that would have been a lot closer. But I didn't know what a podcast was till four years ago. Really? Wow. Yeah. I just remember I told you when I worked at the school district in Orinda. That's when I... Right. I can listen to the principal's podcast, though. My daughter, actually, she's telling the paparazzi jewelry. She, she's doing these live um, podcasts now. So she sets up in the living room, and um, um, you know, she has this display of jewelry. Mm-hmm. And so she's making money because people are ordering. You know, she looks like a live, you know, like Facebook Live. Right. Yes, that's what I call it a podcast. But the first time she did it, she made like $175 in like half an hour, just, you know. It's like people have their own the home shopping network now, you know? Yeah. Here, uh, it's kind of cool, isn't it? It is, yeah. Well, the, the home shopping network. Do you remember that? You know what's a good show to watch? That huh. boy with, um, with uh, what's her name? Jennifer Lawrence from Hunger Games. Yeah. She portrayed, she portrayed that lady that joined from with the housewife. Um, mm-hmm. in my, um, entrepreneur just from make you know, she she got fed up with like you know household stuff. She invented household stuff and she's big now. She has the products that um at um we call Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah. It's called just by her first name Joy. Her products are called Joy. She portrayed that. Huh. That lady. But you gotta see that movie. It's probably a, if they have them like a video store, five would probably be like great for them. I don't nice. think they have them in the red box machines now. <laughs> I've never rented from a red box. Yeah, you never do? Yeah, no. That's what replaced me, my old job that I had for nine years before. Um, I was a field rep for a video, too. Mm-hmm. Out of Utah. If you remember the Albertsons that had um, video rental rooms, that's what I did. Oh, yeah. As a video rep. Yeah, I did that for nine years. I actually moved up. It was a part-time thing, but they actually... Seven Eleven had movie rentals back in the eighties. Yeah, it was like that too. In fact, you were selling our used videos because uh, we were. Um, I was the company sold sold used DVDs. You know how you buy used DVDs are cheaper. Mm-hmm. You buy the gas stations too, like that. We did that too. But the Red Box replaced me. All of a sudden, they tell us that stores were going to close them down, close down the video rental, and they're just going to have machines. So. At least I can tell people I was replaced by a robot or a machine. <laughs> <laughs> but too many people can go nowadays, right? <laughs> I'm one of those that like, have replaced by a robot. <laughs> Oh, all, all places need to be replaced by robots, all people who work in places, because they're just... Oh, you don't want to, you don't want to say that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do, because I, they just, they're just got attitudes, people, everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. The cars are fine, but the people behind them are fucked. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're trying it. They have three cars in San Jose, and they said they're going to add 12 more. They're just starting it right now in San Jose. Oh, boy. News yesterday. Oh, God. Yeah, they're starting. They're already, they're, they have three cars in San Jose that they're, um, they're, they're it's out moving around. So, and now I think they're going to add 12 more within the next, in the next couple of weeks or something. God. I, I want to see I want to see one actually on the road, you know, the, self-driving car. Right now, I guess they have like an assistant with it. Mm -hmm. Like it's things could be could use an update but yeah I, I get what you're saying and stuff yeah yeah you know it's like who would have jobs though you know right yeah i was curious i was curious christy are, are your feet ticklish uh yeah <laughs> oh mine are too really mm-hmm Um, yeah, uh, I mean, like... You said usually people with dry skin are more sensitive, because, you know, you're more prone to dryness, so if you have oily skin, you're not so... You're more thick skin, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, my my nose and my cheeks get really dry sometimes, and sometimes the the heel of my foot does, but... Yep, yeah. the heel of my foot, exactly. <laughs> Join the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I wish I could get more people and you could interview too. I'm trying to think. There's people that would, you know, that would love to um, probably be interviewed and say, you know, you have more people, you, you have more podcasts. Yeah. More, more viewers. I'm trying to think. Um, you know, so I think local celebrities that I've met. Have you ever interviewed any athletes? Like nah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a big sports guy. This is my, my show. Is the, the subjects of my show that I'm interested in are movies, pop culture, and sex. Those are my favorite things to talk about. Movies, pop culture. Those are good topics. And sex. Yes. <laughs> and sex. When you when you tell people you want something, you talk about sex. Any of those kind of. No, because we actually because we talk in in email beforehand about it, and like they tell me what they're comfortable with, what they're not comfortable with, you know, what their boundaries are, and everything. And I accommodate my guests. Okay. okay. So we don't email beforehand, like right? so. It, you know, just, I just really remember that, and it's kind of like kind of took me by surprise the G spot. But now I remember we did kind of discuss that the last you don't want what well like I said nobody watches this thing you know so you're safe you know it's something we can like look at five years late from now and like just laugh at it <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes when you 
something, you know. No. Let me tell you something. I listen to stand-up comedy uh, podcasts, you know, of comedians. They say things that are a lot dirtier and inappropriate than anything I say, and they get millions of views, and they don't get kicked off of YouTube. Yeah. check that out and stuff. Well, yeah. Yeah, during Mad Day, it's cheaper. Tuesdays is cheaper everywhere, too, both movie theaters. Yeah, we got it over here. And we, oh, and we could put our own butter on the popcorn and stuff. It's really cool. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, not too many theaters have them. But you you know, you can throw butter. I wish they did, though. That's all that century needs is those, those kind of the machines, that butter machine. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Well, Chris, well, Christy, I thank you so much for taking the time again. Okay, you're welcome. You know what, do, do send me your email, though, so I you know, can communicate, uh, like, you know, when I let you know uh, any other people that maybe you might be interested in talking to. Okay. Or, Okay, that would be cool. Yeah, so, yeah, go ahead and send me your email address. And um, I don't know why I said that on here. I could just send you the message. That's but okay. Anyways, um, well, it was great talking again to you. Uh, you too. I'm kind of glad we didn't get to uh, talk too much about the sex thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like kind of speechless when you brought that up. <laughs> the deep spot thing. But um, I'm glad we kind of talked about it a little bit. Part. Yeah, and uh, it's good to it's good to be talking to you to hear you on the other end. Say, <laughs> and you guys, no more fires in Reading, right? If they contain everything, though, right? No, everything looks great now. Oh, that's great, and I'm sure the city now is more careful, and you know, I'm glad they caught the guy too. Yeah. And uh, wow, that's I still can't believe he he deliberately did that. Wow. Yep. I got a Google that. Yep. 
All right, Christy, you have yourself a great night. Thank you. You too. You have a good rest of the week. I will. Have a good weekend. Thank mm. you, and I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Tommy. Okay. Bye bye. Well, there you have it, Christy Nocon. Ain't she a sweetheart? Thank you so much, Christy. We didn't get to talk much more about the G-Spot and other stuff sexual I wanted to talk about because I, th- I thought you were okay with it, but then you brought me up. You brought up to me that you weren't comfortable with it, so it's okay and stuff, but at least we got to talk for a little bit. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.